Hi there, this is the third year electromechanical automation project. Humber and Omron have teamed up to create a one of a kind portable automation safety trainer. Omron will be using the cell to bring it from company to company to demonstrate how safety works and how it can help keep workers safe in their environment. So, to power on the cell, we have an external power adapter which plugs into any outlet from 120 volts and sets it down to 24 volts DC. So the 24 volts DC comes into the panel over here and gets distributed everywhere else in this electrical panel. 24 volts gets distributed on this bus bar and it goes to everything that we need. Our main piece of this project is the G9SP safety controller. This is responsible for monitoring all of our IOs and turning on our safety outputs. We have safety relays up here which turn on our motor. We have fault relays in here which we created to simulate open circuits in the safety wiring to demonstrate how safety circuits react to these kind of situations. We have fusible terminal blocks over here and just a standard expansion I.O. module for standard inputs and outputs. On the cover of the electrical panel we have an HMI which lets us control the cell, gives us options and things like this. All the wiring in here then gets passed down through these, these harnesses and into the safety trainer. The wiring then gets distributed to all these different components. Some of these components that we're using are an e-stop, an enabling grip switch, a door interlock switch, F3SG light curtains, two locking door switches, a non-contact switch, and a hinge switch over here. And in the middle, we have a motor which is simulating our dangerous objects which we are trying to protect. So once the device is powered on, you get this home screen here. First thing you'd want to do is log in. Now, we have three different logins available. An operator login, a maintenance personnel login, and a supervisor login. We'll be going through each one of them and we'll start with operator. So to log in, you click this login button right here. This window pops up. So you click the username to log in. Operator username is all caps, so OPR is the username. Click enter, put in the password. Password for this login is 1111111, six ones, hit enter, login. You are now logged in, close the window, and now you can see that the main process is available. So we click main process. To get the safety trainer ready, right now, if you look at the doors, they can unlock. They are all unlocked. Nothing is locked right now. You can open the doors, you can get into the cell. But when an operator starts to use this cell, they want to be able to lock the doors. So they click lock, and now the doors are now locked and no one can get in. This light over here is now flashing, letting us know we have to reset the system after we lock the doors. So we hold reset and the light on the e-stop illuminates to let us know that we reset the system. We click start and the motor starts running. Now while the operator is using this machinery, no one can come by and open the doors when they pull on it. The doors are locked, things like that. If the operator tries to stick his hands in through the light curtains, the motor stops right away. The system got faulted because I tried to reach through these light curtain beams. Once the safety trainer has been reset, we can stop the safety trainer under emergency conditions by hitting this e-stop. So simply by hitting this, false the system right away and the doors become unlocked just in case you have to get inside the cell. So what we are simulating here is a motor spinning with a blade if the operator had to cut something. But this safety system can be used for any scenario. So instead of this, imagine it was a batch process and the operator had to pour in some liquid at a certain time in, in the operation while the temperature is at a certain point. So the operator can simply open this hopper style door, the motor drops down to quarter percent speed so the operator can safely pour in the materials that they have to pour into the batch. Once the operator is done, they close the door again. Productivity never stopped, it only slowed down and they can resume on with normal activity. So an effective way to log in as maintenance mode is very easy. Just grab the grip switch, pull it out of its holster, 
and on the HMI, the login screen appears. So while I'm holding the grip switch, I'm going to log in as maintenance mode. So maintenance mode is just M, N, T, enter, and the password is just six twos. Log in. Once I have now logged in, this maintain button appears on the HMI screen. By clicking this maintain button, I will then activate maintenance mode. So I click the maintain button, and now, what I can do while holding this grip switch, I can simulate feeding something through the light curtains or simulate opening this door and retrieving, let's say maybe a box fell off the conveyor. So with this grip switch in my hand, it is almost like a portable e-stop. If I release this grip switch, the system will fall. If I squeeze this grip switch, the system will fall. So imagine, Another scenario with the batch process that I had to pour some liquid into the top at a certain point during the process. So if I did that, I can simply reach in and pour something in. The motor will slow down while I'm pouring the liquid or powder, whatever it is, process I'm doing. Once I'm done pouring it in, I simply take the, the bucket out or the valve out and productivity goes up again to full speed. So with maintenance mode, if I had to, uh, let's say, adjust a bracket, or fix a sensor, clean the light curtain, something like that. While I'm doing that, if I have this door open and I'm working in here and I don't know what's going on around me, if someone passing by tries to stick their hands through the light curtains, the system falls immediately. Because too many people are entering the work cell that aren't holding the grip switch. Only the person holding the grip switch should be entering the work cell. If too many people try to enter the work cell, the system will fall. So while I'm working in here, if my hands are through the light curtain and something bad happens, all I have to do is simply release the grip switch and the system will stop. So to simply log in as supervisor, we go back to the login screen, take away the maintenance username, and we log in as a supervisor. Supervisor login is just SPR. And we insert the password, which is just six threes. Once we are logged in as supervisor, the advanced button becomes available. We will get into that, but first we're going to demonstrate the diagnostics. So right here, we have the diagnostics page of all the inputs. So while looking at this, I could reach over and grab the grip switch, and you will see these contacts here change. So why don't I grab the grip switch? The contacts change to green, letting you know those, are closed, those contacts are closed now. Same thing with the e-stop. If I hit the e-stop, the contacts switch over. So this is a very good way of troubleshooting your system, seeing which, which inputs are on or off, things like that. We also have the same page with the outputs. So with the outputs, if we wanted to lock the doors, we simply click that, and now I just lock this door. Or I can click it again, unlock the door. So that's a very, another very good way of testing the system, making sure everything's working properly. Or I can click this on and the reset light stays on. Click it again, reset light turns off. And now I can force the motor to turn on. So I just click this button here, safety relays are activated. And now the motor is by default will run at quarter speed. If I hold this other button here, the motor will run at full speed only while I am holding the button. If I let go of the button, it defaults and goes back to 25% speed. While this is happening, while I'm forcing these outputs on and off, if something unsafe is happening and someone sees this, they can simply reach over and hit the e-stop. So the motor is moving right now, but when I hit the e-stop, it stops dead in its track. So while in supervisor mode, we can go to this advanced button. Clicking this advance button, advance button brings us to this screen where we can view the different logins available to us. If we go to the test fault page, these three buttons will activate faults in the system and create open circuits. So, for example, if we click the grip switch fault here, the green light on the HMI pops on, letting us know that we just turned on a fault. And if we look in the panel over here, the green light on the relay is also on, letting us know a fault is active. Plus, in addition, there's a little F on the top corner of the screen here, letting the user know they just inserted a fault in place. 
So what this grip switch fault just did, if we go back here, when I try and use this grip switch, there's an open circuit in there. So when I try and grab the grip switch, the system will fault out and say, something is wrong, we're not gonna allow you to start. So when looking at the G9SP, when I take out this grip switch, faults appear on the G9SP. If I release the grip switch, the red faults go away. When I squeeze it, the faults come back, letting us know something is wrong here, do not proceed. I'm not gonna let you proceed. So, if an industry did not have the safety controller or a safety relay, something monitoring the contacts, letting us know that there is an open circuit in this grip switch, someone could be using this grip switch walking into a dangerous environment thinking when they let go of this or squeeze this it's going to save their life but really nothing will happen so without this safety controller and these safety devices your life is at risk of getting hurt but it doesn't have to be with these safety devices provided by online